or Power Rangers genre normally comes up with the same set of rules. Five heroes or so come together to try to be an overarching villain, usually of the alien variety, while in turn keeping their true identity a secret. But with Gotcha crowds, things start to break this formula, and whether it's a good idea or not is what I'm here to find out. Hello Internet, my name is Shannon and welcome to our show. Today I bring you the fun, social, and futuristic ride that is Gotcha Man Crowds. Taking place in the year 2015, the city of Tachikawa, Japan has been established as the country's second metropolis. In this city houses the special people known only as the Gachaman, special reinforced suits that are powered by the manifestation of spiritual powers of living beings called Note. Enter Hajime Isinose, a 16-year-old energetic high school girl who is obsessed with collecting planets and stationery. She is one day chosen to become a Gachaman herself and is tasked with the duty of fighting a mysterious alien known only as Mess. After I heard this synopsis, I was already having my doubts, but since the main focus of this Sentai was the female instead of the overly headstrong male, I decided to sit down, shut up, and watch it. Once I had watched the series, I thought it was an interesting take on the genre as a whole, especially when it reached the halfway mark, and I also liked the themes of modern heroism and technological consequences. I simply loved how this anime focused more on the internal aspects of being a hero and what each character thought it was the right way to save people. Because normally in Sentais, the fights and battles usually are the focus, which could, to me, make the other parts of the series fall flat. But this was not the case with crowds. My biggest props goes to how relatable the situations are compared to the real world, as it talks about the social media and how much it can make a difference. However, this anime tends to contain a huge amount of plot holes and unanswered questions, which at times makes me very disheartened. I wish they would elaborate more, but they most of the time leave me hanging. I also didn't like how we didn't get enough of the characters' backgrounds, which caused me not to care for half of the cast at all. Speaking of characters, no one stood out to me as super amazing, yet it wasn't boring either. However, the main character, Hajime, was a fun person to watch, and I liked how she took a situation and turned it around in a way that no one expected of her. Now, I've been hearing recently that people tend to compare to Haruhi to the mind, but that's not the case. Where Haruhi tends to drag others into her schemes thinking eccentrically, Hajime's personality alongside with her surprising depth of perception has caused a change in others which I thought was very heartwarming. As for the other characters, eh, it was a hit or miss for me. I really enjoyed Perk Kurtz, the personification of the internet, Suguru, Samurai Wannabe, and Pai Pai the Panda Man, while the others like Joe McEmo Pants kind of made me bored of their appearances since people like him really didn't add much to the story besides being an emotional role model for Sugane. The Rui, who I just found out was a man, is a very interesting character but I wish I could see more of her, him, whatever background and why he or she has so focused ambitions though he did whine a lot to me now for those of you who have watched our 2013 anime awards we placed gotcha as the runner up for best artwork in my personal opinion gotcha artwork was very fresh and unique in a way that it made the show more pleasing to watch from the social media to the school day scenes the art fit the tone of the semi-futuristic metropolis, my favorite part being the eyes and the detailed hair of the characters, even though the designs themselves of the characters and their human form were very predictable to me. I did love, however, their superhero looks as it worked, ni- worked nicely to blend each character's likes and dislikes. I know a lot of people, however, were also concerned about the use of CG, which I have to say was nicely added in my opinion, and it didn't bother me much. As for sound, I got to say right off the bat that this soundtrack was very great and my favorite part of the series. I'm not even a fan of much dubstep either. When things were joyful, it had a way of making me smile from the tunes. And when things got serious, I was ready to see what would happen. So for both animation and sound, it wasn't the greatest I've seen, but it was something I enjoyed, which was fun in my book. I will say before I wrap this up though, that the ending sequence to me needed work. I didn't like it at all. That was the only time where CG did bother me. 
Before I wrap it up here, I want to say that you do not have to know anything about the original series to enjoy this show. I myself haven't watched or even heard of much of the original series before this anime, but I have read a few things and it got me interested to find out more. This spin-off finds a good way to put a new perspective on the series, using similar plot themes and terms from its original work, while also making a fun standalone story. I will have to say though that in terms of recommendation, it's not the most original story, but it does give a good little twist overall on how a Sentai should be, and it really is a fun ride. So with all that being said, and after some consideration, I give Gotcha Crowd 7 Fruit Scented Planners out of 10. If you like what you heard today, then come visit our pages for more fun and interesting topics from me and my friends. If you really want to support our production, you can head over to the Cafe Press store and purchase something nice for yourself. Thank you for watching, everyone. Stay tuned to Anime America.